And our big topic today is menopause. It's something that may not only cause some nasty symptoms, but actual complication to your health as well. We have Janice Barr back with us, professor from the U of I, and Laura Herringer, a nurse practitioner from Christie Clinic. Thanks for coming back with us. We've You're got welcome. a lot more to talk about when it comes to these complications. Laura, I want to start with you. Uh, there can be some definite compl complications with heart disease as well as blood vessel disease. Tell us why that is. Well, what we've found, and now we're talking menopause, we're talking after the periods have stopped, so no more of the pre-stuff, um, that once we lose our estrogen, our uh, cardiac diseases start to come into play, and we start to see more heart disease in women. We also start to see more change in where our weight gets gained, and normally pre-menopause women gain weight in their breasts, their hips, their thighs. Post-menopause, we gain it in the abdomen, which is the more dangerous type mm -hmm. of um, adipose tissue to gain and that also is much harder to get rid of which is why women start saying when they went through menopause is when they noticed suddenly that they were putting on weight even though they were doing everything the same as what they used to do. Um, so it becomes more important that we start changing diet, exercise, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. a lot of that is for prevention of heart disease and prevention of gaining that weight because that weight is going to play a big part in how our menopause goes. Okay, now another thing we always think about as a risk factor when it comes to menopause is osteoporosis. And Janice, you've had extensive research in this area. What have you guys found? Well, it's true, yes, osteo, it's, um, if I may refer to some of the work, we had a, a very, we did a very large study funded by NIH. Uh, I want to recognize uh, Professor Elizabeth Jeffrey in our nutritional sciences department at the university, and Dr. Russell Turner at Mayo Clinic was one another one of our. So we were looking at the, you know, the question is, if I eat enough soybeans, can that replace the estrogen that my body is not making after menopause, and will that save my bones? All okay. Right. Okay. That, that was, was the question. That was the question, and we used the gold standard, which is the spray dolly rat. Now I know most women out there may not want to be compared to the rat, but this is the <laughs> this is the animal model that is used to develop osteoporotic drugs. Okay. And interestingly, if you take the rat's ovaries out and feed the ones that have lost their ovaries, the same as their controls that still have their ovaries, the ones without the ovaries gain weight, even though they had the same number of calories and so forth. And what we did is we did a very extensive, we, took, we had pure, we had soybeans ground, we had the isolated estrogens from the soybeans, they're called phytoestrogens. They're a very, very weak estrogen, they're probably 100 to 1,000th what the normal uh, estrogen that we make. Okay. And so we had very, very extensive groups. And the bottom line was the uh, soybean or the phytoestrogens did nothing for bone. In fact, when we got to the very high doses of the phytoestrogens, then it started to almost be a negative, so that we did get some hypertrophy, some thickening of the uterus. We couldn't say it was uterine cancer, but it was, you know, thickening. It was unusual. Okay. Yeah. So the bottom line is that now I know, you know, at least in, in that animal model, and it was done extensively, um, we had no effect. Uh, and I know there are people who will say, yes, oh, I drink my soy milk and I am fine. And there is a big, you know, there's a huge placebo effect. I mean, it's amazing really? <laughs> when you okay. think, oh, yeah, I mean, you know, we can trick our, I mean, I don't really mean to trick ourselves, but, you know, there are people, I mean, there's a lot of studies showing that, you know, if you get a pill and you think it's doing something, that it, you, it may do something, mainly because it changes your whole mindset and you're changing other hormones in your body by doing this, you know, so forth, yeah, so. But, uh, so, yeah, and osteoporosis is really, really a serious problem because, you know, as, of course, Laura knows better than I do as a, a nurse practitioner, but, you know, then we have, you know, uh, spine, you know, there's, I mean, so, so painful. I, I've known women that have had a fractured uh, vertebrae, uh, breaking of, you know, the hips, you know, uh, and, of course, wrists. And it's very, very debilitating. And many of these women that you know do not recover from that. So, okay. Yeah. So the bottom line is, uh, and I if, I, if I may go back and talk about estrogen. Sure. Uh, interestingly enough, you know, this uh, about what was it? Yeah, ten years ago, is when this National Health Initiative study was done, and it was extremely poor. And I can say this as a, I'm speaking as a scientist and as a researcher and as a reproductive biologist. Okay. So now you're moving into hormone therapy a little right, bit here. Right, hormone therapy, okay. that's right. Because we've got a lot of questions about exactly. that, about whether okay. it's something that's that right. can help. So well, go yes. ahead. Right. So first of all, this study, they wanted, the question was, well, if are we taking hormones, because some women said they're taking it to protect their heart. Will it protect their heart? So they wanted to get this study done quickly. So they were not careful in their selection. So they took women from ages 50 <clears throat> to 70, okay? 
Now, they were taking some women that had not had a hormone, had not had estrogen or, you know, taken any hormone for 20 years. Now, we know that is not the way to do it. Furthermore, of this group of women they got, because they wanted to get a lot of women quickly, <coughs> excuse me, they had one-third were normal weight, uh, one-third were obese, and one-third over, overweight. I mean, severely overweight. Okay. So number one is, you know, the selection of the women. <coughs> and then second, so about halfway through, all right. And then, <coughs> instead of trying different hormone preparations, they took only one, which was Premarin, which was the one used at that time, which is a, is a um, conjugated estrogen. And then about halfway through, they said, oh, we had a few more women in the hormone group have heart attacks. And so they said, now we had an increase of whatever it was, 10% or 20%. Well, the bottom line was that if you looked at the actual number, it was not significant. In other words, if you go from one to two, that's a 100% increase, right? But, you know, if you, but, so if I say I had a 100% increase, you'd say, oh, that's awful. But if I said, I, I just doubled the number, you know, it's, so it's how you play the numbers. Okay. So the reproductive physiologists, who are the basic scientists who have gone back and analyzed this data, have come to the conclusion that there was no serious problem and that the National Institutes of Health should have backed off. They should withdraw their statements. But again, just as Laura has said, the medical profession, you know, many of them felt like if I am prescribing estrogens to a woman and then she has, let's say she gets breast cancer, mm -hmm. okay, then she might turn around and say, well, it was because the doctor gave me estrogen. This is why I have. But, you know, I mean, I have a lot of women's, my, a lot of my friends are women scientists who do similar work. And all of us are sold 100% on estrogen. And we know that that has been a big question that's yes. come up. We, people are also weighing in other questions uh, yeah. on our pages. We're going to come back with yeah. you guys in just a little bit yeah. to answer those.